Hey, what's up, y'all? Today we're here at Booker T. Washington in North Tulsa for the National Racial Equity Initiative for Social Justice, hosted by the Congressional Black Caucus. Members of the caucus flew all the way down to Tulsa from D.C. today just to be with this community as we continue a years-long effort to achieve equity in the city of Tulsa. My name is Nicole Austin Hillary, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. The CBCF, as we lovingly call ourselves, envisions a world in which all communities have an equal voice in public policy through leadership cultivation, economic empowerment, and civic engagement. We wanted to wrap up our community conversations for this year in Tulsa, again, because of its rich history and because it is a place where community members are so active. Because again, we want and believe that individuals on the ground have to be the real forces for change. We are here to support, we are here to educate and give information and provide resources, but we want them to be the ones who are leading the efforts in their own communities. And so that's why we're here and that's why we're doing those, communi those community conversations. I am thrilled to be here as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation as we have a com community conversation right here in Tulsa. Uh, with, with respect to racial equity, with respect to uh, understanding our past and moving forward. And so we're really excited about the opportunity to have uh, folks from Tulsa, concerned citizens, elected officials, um, academicians are here, artists are here, um, to really have a community conversation and dialogue about the history here in Tulsa, what that history means, and more importantly, what can we collectively do to move uh, you know, the needle when it comes to providing uh, restitution for what happened right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bottom line, uh, we do better when we have folks that want to do the right thing, whether they're white, black, red, yellow, brown. And until we have that, especially in 2023, until we have folks that want to do right, we're gonna keep getting the same. Uh, one of the things we created, uh, co-founded was the Black Wall Street Chamber, uh, because we needed a, an effective chamber in our community uh, that was focused on Black entrepreneurship and unapologetic about it. Yes. Now, it that frustrates me that we have to tiptoe and act like, you know, we don't want to offend anyone, yeah, right. but no one else does. I've been thinking a lot about the future of our community, of Hollywood <laughs> specifically. There is an incredible, rich history here that is not just valuable to us, but it's valuable to people across this country. And as our city experiences incredible change, what are we doing to ensure that not just the people we bring up here, but people who come from the outside, who are loving individuals who want to participate in this history, how are we ensuring that everybody can participate in a way that respects the legacy of Greenwood, um, upholds Black autonomy, and, and it's in, in keeping with, you know, the values of, you know, what you do for me without me, you do to me. Uh, Community-centered leadership versus leadership, leader-centered leader communities. How do we do that? And if I was asked the question today, you know, how are the children, if we think about our African culture and really centering our, our children, when we start to center their voices, I feel like we will go much further in this journey and allow for them to take us into the future. Breakout sessions were part of today's programming. Participants broke up into several groups to discuss building black power, cooperative economics, and how to imagine the future of Black Wall Street. We must squash all animosity between races because reconciliation can only happen on a mutual basis. One toast. I'm the line of good credit that everyone should establish to find their own businesses, homes, and cars, and dreams. I'm the dotted line that you happily sign on. I'm the time timeline and the pen and the present that says the time is now. Everyone must pull their God-given gifts and tools and combine our resources to control the course of our own community. Oasis building requires unity. We must build, the, we should build and buy the empty homes, buildings, and vacant lots on our blocks. We should own our own communities. Frederick Douglass, one of our great fighters for abolition, there's a reason he said, with no struggle, there's no progress. And later on in that, comment he said power concedes nothing without demand and later on he said 
If you find where the oppressed people stop, that is where you can begin to measure the injustice. So that wraps up the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's National Racial Equity Initiative um, here in Tulsa at Booker T. Washington. The Congressional Black Caucus Foundation pledged to be a national partner for Tulsa and the state of Oklahoma as we continue to seek racial justice in the Greenwood community. I'm the hyphen between African American. I'm the sidebar that asks, why not just Americans? I'm the correlation between the DNA of reconciliation and mutual resolutions. I'm the double helix that holds the genetic code for mutual solutions. I'm the lifeline of the lineages who won't rest until we get restitution. I'm the here, when we've had it up to here, leads to revolution. I'm the poverty line between leaving legacies or generational curses. I'm the fence that you stand on to be appalled or to applaud these verses. What side of the line are you on? Oh, right.